long-running Daymar rally began in 2019 and has quickly gathered the attention of hundreds of racers and thousands of spectators from across the globe. It is the largest and longest race hosted in the Star Citizen universe. This might not mean much considering many are still waiting to jump into the game, but it speaks to the ability of the community to run player-directed events in a limited test environment. It is an endurance race across the sand-swept plains and canyons of Crusader's second moon, Daymar. Every year, dozens of players form teams and spend months practicing in anticipation of the event in order to earn bragging rights and the chance to win prizes both in real life and the game. Last year, I covered the race for Imperial Geographic, and this year, I'm going deeper with this short feature covering a single server instance of the race. So sit back, grab some bennies, and get ready for what critics are calling the filthiest race in the verse. Close up on the bald spot. <laughs> This man don't have no hair. I'm pretty sure that's a toupee. <laughs> I'm Jacoby One Kenobi. I was the driver slash team lead for my org Daedalus Initiatives Rover Division. We were in Rover Division 02, and it was fun. fun. I'm Kane Valord, and I unexpectedly stumbled into the position of co-driver for Daedalus Initiative. I did not expect to be in the Daymar Rally, but there I was at the starting line, unaware that my life was about to change, and completely ready to carry the banner for Daedalus's rover division in server number two. The race is made up of three divisions spread across a multitude of servers, the buggy division, the rover division, and the bike division. Each team is allowed two drivers and two support pilots that can assist the race vehicle throughout the event. One support vehicle is allowed for refueling, restock, and repair, and each server has a camera crew and a security team, as well as a race administrator. Vehicle weapons will be allowed, but only after the first checkpoint. Speaking of checkpoints, the race is a long haul. The race takes place on a small portion of Daymar's surface, totaling about 360 kilometers. It begins at Shubin Mining Facility, an outpost primarily used for trading materials. From there, racers will travel 92 kilometers to Eager Flats Aid Shelter. After this, the bulk of the race continues over a multitude of mountain ranges and canyons, 270 kilometers to the finish line at Wolf Point Aid Shelter, another small outpost consisting of just one structure. Given the nature of Daymar's surface and the current state of the game, it's almost a guarantee that not all contestants will survive the trip. But it wouldn't be a rally without some death now, would it? The second rover server was the only server to not have enough racers to fill up entirely, so only six teams were present in this server. Um, I didn't want anything to do with racing. It, it didn't appeal to me originally. I mean, just the thought of it. Mind you, I never tried it until that day. Um, you know, our team was running practice sessions and they already had a co-driver and that co-driver unfortunately couldn't make their time commitment and so i received a call at 11 in the morning saying okay we need you can you do this I say i know i'm being shuttled to a, a rover and i'm placed in it and they're like well you don't have to do anything just sit there watch netflix or something but that's not what happened <laughs> I got shuttled in on a county and I loaded up with uh, Jacoby, who is the driver. Uh, there was, we had some error, people crashed, rovers fell through the ground on Daymar. But all in all, we started about on time with the global uh, go.
Every team had plenty of time to get prepared and in position for the race, though a few crashes and some instability meant extra time was needed as the surface of Daymar began to warm up with the light of Stanton peeking over the horizon, night turned to day as the final countdown began. A universal countdown was held across all servers that marked the beginning of the race. And while server latency meant that not everybody would start at the exact same time, the length of the race mostly nullified that issue. In the early morning of Daymar, the race was a go across all servers without a problem. The first of many canyons encountered in the race was also the first decision for the racers to make. Teams were quickly forced to pick and choose their paths as the options opened up in front of them. As more ravines and canyons were encountered, the spaces between racers grew. The support ships were important in these situations as they kept an eagle eye on the terrain below advising the racers on the ground towards the best path moving forward. While racers were spread across hundreds of meters driving through rock fields, over rolling hills, and around and through small canyons and ravines, they all kept the first outpost in sight and continued along a similar path to one another. Of course, little progress had been made thus far, and there were hours more worth of travel to make across the surface of Daymar. Nonetheless, all was progressing smoothly, until the griefers attacked. Uh, I was told by my driver that I had the fourth most difficult job, and it was going to be all right. And I, I, I took his word for it. <laughs> so, our rover is what I can assume was last place, so we were pretty far behind the pack. Our support co-pilot noticed in the rover division tracking channel that people were getting blown up, and it wasn't by any of us. It was some trolls who decided that they wanted to ca crash our, uh, our rally. So one by one, people just started to drop like flies, you know, this is Diwali racing, we're out of the race sort of thing. Um, and then they started to come towards us. And our support craft was taking out first, and Anvil Hawk EMP'd it, so it really had no chance. Our support team just got vaporized before they even knew what was happening. They got vaporized. And then it's got its target on us, because obviously the rover needs to stay near the support craft. Jacoby's like, Kane, Kane, you gotta get out now. I'm like, what? Get out of the turret? He goes, no. Get out of the rover now. And then I saw him die. The rover exploded just as I le leapt from it. I did a ring around the rosy, around a, a big boulder. He thought he had killed Kane. But Kane was actually just hiding around the other side of the rock. So I died, Kane lived. And then I told Kane, I was like, well, do you want to run it? I mean, you're one of the two last racers left. Uh, so if you want to run it for a couple hours, you go ahead, or we can just give up now and just call it a day. And he was like, well, I got nothing else planned. I'm just going to run it. I'm like, you're, you're stupid. I don't know why you would want to do that, but I'm going to support you, man. I'm going to be here for you. And so he ran it. He ran it almost all the way. It was amazing.
I didn't know what I was getting into. And about 15, 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes in, I started to think of, okay, that was clocked in at 80 kilometers um, as far as distance is concerned. How long can I possibly hold the W key down for? The only racers remaining after the initial attack were a single rover which had made a big enough lead to avoid the onslaught and a man on foot. And while I didn't die because I was shooting this shot, I did grab a more combat ready ship before returning to the ground because, well, extreme journalism calls for it. While a few other ships had survived the attack, the focus was now on just two racers. I stayed with the man on foot to document his 70 plus kilometer run and we ran together for quite some time. He had additional air support as well as a twitch camera tracking his journey for most of the way. But like I mentioned, there was still one more rover left on the ground. Up ahead, a single rover and its support crafts were slowly making their way to the first checkpoint. The racer dealt with the normal obstacles of the day, rock fields, canyons, and hills, but without the glorious light of the nearby star, Stanton. This made for an exciting journey, but it also led to a couple of flips, which makes anybody nervous in Star Citizen. As many know, any wrong move could send you plummeting into the moon's surface or simply respawning at your last spawn point. Oh my god, Star Citizen. Luckily, with a little persistence and a nudge from a friendly neighborhood starfarer, the rover was able to correct itself and get back onto its path to glory. Unfortunately at this time, the griefers had returned, and their first target was the reporter, which I must admit is in pretty poor taste. Predictably, the rover and all associate craft were quickly destroyed, most likely due to the surrounding ships providing radar contacts to the stream snipers. This attack left only one racer left, Kane. Kane was still on foot and was constantly being searched for by the griefers, so I was forced to land my ship and make my way to him on foot to avoid attention. This took a couple of tries as I was spotted once and attacked from what you can see by the damage on my ship. In order to get close to the action, I needed to sneak into the general area to get close enough to hoof it out to meet Kane. I flew under cover of sandstorms until I could get about two kilometers out, then made my way to meet him on foot. Eventually, I met up with the running man, though it wasn't until well into the next day. No, it was mentally exhausting. You're like, how long, how much longer do I have to go? I wanted to quit, but uh, Daedalus Initiative put a lot on me, and a lot of people were watching. I couldn't just quit, so I had to keep going. Throughout this whole time, griefers were attacking Eager Flats to try and kill the last remaining race staff positioned to receive the racers at the first checkpoint. It wasn't going well for the defenders. By the time I met up with Kane on the run, he had quite the following online as watchers were cheering for his success. I was not expecting anything like that, and I didn't actually get to watch it. Uh, someone popped into the Discord comms to tell me that I was on air, um, and they would feed me comments of what people were saying. And it, it seemed at first contrived, I thought, 
And I realized that was foolish later on because it was actually happening. And that gave me a boost. I'm like, wow, these people really want this guy to continue holding the W key. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll do that. In the Twitch chat, some of our org mates were cheering Kane on um, just because we wanted to show support for him. And then I guess it caught on. Uh, the host detox was like, who's Kane? And, and then it just started from there. And then Flag was capturing uh, Kane's Discord stream. And uh, yeah, the, the following started picking up. Everybody started cheering, go Kane. I, I can't remember exact viewer numbers, but I'd say at least there was about 1,500 to 1,400 people watching. No, it felt really good. It felt really good. I don't think I could have done it without that. I traveled with Kane for kilometers across everything Damar had to throw at us. We navigated sandstorms, we crossed through canyons, we climbed hills, and we made our way all the way into the night. With a total of 80 kilometers being run by Kane throughout the event, at this point there were still more than 25 kilometers to run to the first checkpoint. He continued to run tirelessly through the darkness, and despite some guidance from the race administrator, it was very easy to get lost while navigating the steep walls of the canyons at night. Those were my biggest worry. Uh, it wasn't raiders, dust storms, nighttime, who was getting out of the canyon. You, you don't really take the scale in until you're actually on foot. I mean, flying around, it doesn't look so big, but on foot, it, it's a whole different beast. You gotta find a way down without breaking your legs. And then you gotta find a way up. Otherwise, you're gonna be stuck for who knows how long going in one direction or the other of the canyon floor. While I had a very loose marker, of where I should be going, I mean very loose. I had to rely on Crusader, uh, the stars, and bits of particularities in the horizon in order to continue pushing forward. As the night pushed on, a constant battle raged overhead as additional star citizens entered the server and tried to clear the way for the racer to make his way into Eager Flats as stream snipers were trying to locate him. It was tense, to say the least, and was a solid effort put on by many individuals, but in the end, things did not turn out for the best. I knew I wasn't going to make it to Eager Flats, and if I did make it to Eager Flat, I would be destroyed before I got through the door. So I had plenty of time to think about my impending doom. Um, and I could hear the ships. When I saw security leave, it was very grim at that point, but Daedalus Initiative came in with ships and I knew they were looking for me, the raiders. And I could lose them in the canyon. And I did for a little bit. I saw two ships, well first one ship, as I came out of the last canyon and came over the ridge. Like, well, they're not here to help me. <laughs> um, I wanted to go prone, but I thought that wouldn't work out. Maybe it would be best if I just hid behind the rock. I didn't anticipate that their bullets would be able to go through the rock. Kane was being tracked down and killed, I remained clipped on a rock and left behind, completely powerless to help, not that I could have done much. The Damar rally stream was flipping back and forth between various cameras on various servers throughout the race, and on the morning of day three, the camera flipped to Kane's view just as he looked at his destination, giving anybody watching the stream an idea of where he was at the moment. 
Before long, the stream snipers were able to zero in on him and kill him. Part of me was relieved to die, so I didn't have to run no more. <laughs> and, and when my body flew away, everyone could hear my voice, freedom, freedom, freedom. With the death of Kane, the second server of Rover Division was no more. I was glad it was over with, but at the same time, I wanted to at least make it to Eager Flats. I think I was more relieved than anything else. Yeah, I was more relieved. Uh, it's the first time I raced in a video game. Um, you know, when you enter a space game, it's not something, at least in my opinion, that you think about doing. I mean, sure, there's racing in Elite Dangerous, um, using the planet's gravity, uh, gravity well to slingshot you around. It sounds really neat until you try it. This is more involved and a lot more to think about. I, I like the technical challenges to it. And I didn't think I would like that, but when Star Citizen, I like flying the ships, but most importantly, I like, I like racing. It's, it's really great and I encourage everybody to at least try it once. And I would still like racing, whether or not this whole we run with Kane business took off or not. You know, whether I joined the Daymar rally or not, I would still be racing and enjoy it. I definitely would do it again. It was a unique experience for sure. I wouldn't trade it for any other division, but I will not do Rover Division again. While the Rover Division has proven to be the least exciting division, and the partially filled server proved to be detrimental to the race. Many racers said they would like to return to the rally again and prove themselves once more on the sands of Daymar. On behalf of Imperial Geographic, I would like to thank you for tuning into this documentary covering the second annual Daymar rally, and I hope you will take a moment to share your thoughts on the event as well as subscribing to Imperial Geographic for more coverage of Star Citizen events throughout the years. For further information on the final standings across the entire event or information on how to get involved in the Daymar Rally, visit the official website, which will be linked in the description. Thanks again, and I will see you next time.